same time in a sing single reaction. Now let us talk about the inverse PCR. In inverse PCR, the actual thing is that the primers are oriented in the reverse direction of the usual orientation. Okay, and why this PCR is important and I found this is a one of the clever procedure, uh, a very very intelligent procedure, very very intelligent procedure. How? Let us look at here. Uh, it is utilized to clone sequences uh, which is unknown, flanking a known sequence, right? So suppose these are the sequences we need to amplify. This is the unknown sequence. This is also an unknown sequence. So, we, uh, so this is a known sequence at the middle, and this known sequence is flanked by two unknown sequences. So the unknown sequence here, and also another unknown sequence here. Now, suppose we need to clone this unknown sequence. So before cloning this unknown sequence, we must amplify it via PCR. But we cannot amplify any unknown sequence via the conventional PCR. Why? Because in conventional PCR, we must know the sequence. Uh, because knowing the sequence is important to design the primers, right? So if you don't know the sequence, how can I, uh, how can I uh, design the primers? So before designing the primer, we must know the sequence. But in this case, we don't know this uh, segment of the sequence. It is unknown to us. So how can we amplify the unknown sequence? Now we can amplify the sequence, uh, unknown sequence, but we must have a known sequence right behind it. So suppose in this case, this is the known sequence at the middle. We know the sequence. We can add primers for this known sequence, but you cannot know this unknown sequence. We don't know the unknown sequence, right? So if uh, this is the procedure that this is an uh, this is a, suppose this red thing is a unknown segment or unknown sequence, and say get this color and this part, this rest of the part flanking are the green things are the known sequence. Then we can add primers. So for example, let's say the primer is here in blue in color. So we can add primers then in both the cases and we can amplify the segment, right? So for amplification of a unknown segment, we must have added the known sequence at both their terminal region, right? But in this case, the total opposite thing is happening. At the middle we have known and at the terminal region we have unknown. So what we need to do, we need to reverse it. We need to put this unknown at the middle and put this known sequence at the terminal. How can we achieve this? This is our actual goal for this particular process. How can we achieve this? We can achieve it by utilizing the light digestion with restriction enzymes. So we make the digestion with restriction enzymes. And after digestion of this unknown sequence with restriction enzymes, a random kind of digestion, it will provide the overhang, right? So it will provide, remember, uh, say uh, this is the segment it, it can provide this kind of overhang sequences and two overhang sequence can make pair with itself so this is an overhang this is another over overhang that are generated at both the terminal of this DNA and as a result these two overhang will be paired with each other they are joined with each other this is suppose the joining region so they are circularized so they bring close together both the ends and they make a circularized plasmid like structure like this so circular DNA structure is formed now what we can do we know this red colored region of the segment now the whole process is joined the whole DNA segment is circularized and totally covalently attached now what we can do we can use a restriction enzyme to cleave somewhere middle of this known sequence as the sequence are known so we can easily uh, provide the restriction enzyme which can make a cut here so we will provide the enzyme, it will make a cut here. As a result of making a cut here, again this circularized DNA will be linearized, but now the linearized segment will have in the middle unknown region, so unknown in the middle and known at the terminal. Remember, this is our goal. We need to provide this because when you provide this kind of sequence, unknown in the middle but known at the, uh, at the terminal region, we can actually design primers which will destined to attach to the known segment, right? So we know both the terminal regions. So we can design primers which can add, uh, which can be added to this known region and can amplify this unknown segment, right? At the very beginning, what happens actually at the middle was uh, no, known, at the terminal was unknown. We need to reverse it. And to reverse it, what we usually do, we use light digestion with restriction enzyme both the fragment to provide the overhang, then to make a circularized DNA. Then we use a restriction enzyme to cut it somewhere at the middle of uh, the known sequence to make again a linearized 
uh, DNA but in this realized DNA is completely inverse of the previous type it is reversed now at the middle we are having unknown which was previously was known at the terminal we are having known which was previously unknown so now this is our goal to provide unknown at the middle known at the terminal so that we can provide the primer which can bind with this known segment at the terminal so that it can amplify the unknown sequences so we can amplify unknown sequences by this inverse PCR now you can see how much intelligent the technique actually is right it's a very very brilliant technique now uh, this kind of uh, inverse PCR can be used to uh, the identify the transposable elements as well as uh, the identification of the genomic inserts any kind of genomic inserts those are unknown inserts we can detect them utilizing this inverse PCR.